Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is August 20th, 2024. <clears throat> the Lord has not led me to bring forth a word in a long time. But today I finally feel a, a release to bring a word that he gave me the title to almost a year ago. It's called, Show Them Where We Are. Yesterday, I finished a book written by Maurice Samuel in the year 1924. The book is called You Gentiles. Maurice Samuel was a Romanian-born Jewish-American author. He wrote the book in 1924, just after World War I. The book explains very cogently and very sincerely why the Jews and the Gentiles can never comfortably coexist in this world. His is a profound thesis, and he does it without hate. He even does it without calling the West Christian Gentiles the gross hypocrites they are. Maurice Samuel indicts lawless, hypocritical Gentiles while explaining Jewish practices, not realizing that this, that the Jews' very way of life that he reveres is exactly why Jesus rebuked them. He knows the words of the Jewish prophets found in their and our Old Testament of the Bible, and even quotes some of my lifelong favorite scriptures, like, Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an everlasting stream. Maurice Samuel longs for true justice in this world, like all with a true heart do. When I finished the last page, I was weeping. Weeping because I understand that in his book, written exactly 100 years ago. Maurice Samuel, the Jew, spoke as a prophet concerning the very year and day we live in today. Now let me show you where we are. I'm going to start by taking you to something I wrote about a week ago. It was just some notes from a video I was watching concerning the Ukrainian NATO US led terrorist attack against Kursk, Russia. This is from 8 13 24. Today, political commentators around the world, like Scott Ritter of the United States and Dmitry Orlov of the United States, who was born in Russia in 1962 and he moved to the United States in 1974, announced that the re recent Ukrainian attack against Russia's Kursk re region was a U.S. NATO-led terrorist attack against the nation of Russia and that they lawlessly moved onto Russia's sovereign land, recklessly killing, destroying, and looting. Orlov then announced that the U.S. is a destroyed power, who is afraid to go to war against Russia because the United States' weapons are old and inferior to Russia's new weapons, especially weapons recently developed because of the war they were forced to go to against Ukraine. They had to go to war in order to save the Russians who were being slaughtered and persecuted in Ukraine. Remember, Ukraine was overtaken by a coup led by the United States and NATO in 2014 that replaced a newly elected pro-Russian president. Also, there is no legitimate power existing that can even sign a peace agreement on behalf of Ukraine. Because Ukraine was a coup installed 
power led by President Zelensky. It is not legitimate, and the ones who planned and carried out the coup are NATO and their master, the United States, who did so in 2014 while Barack Obama was president and Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. So Russia is biding their time and not rushing into retaliation right now. In the video, Orlov says Russia will not negotiate with anyone concerning Ukraine. Ukraine no longer has a president, no longer has a parliament. It is no longer a federal state. That means it is no longer a sovereign nation as far as Russia is concerned. There is no one within Ukraine with authority to sign a peace agreement. And there is no one to sign a peace agreement on Ukraine's behalf because Ukraine is supposed to be a sovereign entity. So there is no possibility of a peace agreement. The questioner then asked, do you think Russia will now attack Ukraine? Orlov's answer was this, no, first of all, it is not Ukraine, it is the United States. The United States is very well collapsing on its own. Just by waiting, Russia will win. We're just one giant crash away from the United States disappearing and going home and licking its wounds. There's no reason for Russia to escalate. The Ukrainian army is getting killed at the rate of about 2,000 people per day, and about 200 per day are getting killed in the Kursk region. How long can Ukraine continue to do this? Orlov continues, The Ukrainians have been duped more than any other nation in the world. They no longer have a country. The Ukrainian nation is dead. It will never get its population back. Basically, it sold its own country, its own land, to companies like BlackRock. It's finished. The people have to clamor for peace and reform themselves and make themselves worthy before the Russians will consider any sort of a peace gesture. Toward the end, he says, Russia helped deliver many nations around the world from Western colonialism. The damage the neo-imperialists did after the disintegration of the Soviet Union is now being remedied. He's talking about what happened in the 1990s, just 30 years ago. Well, just a few days ago on August 16th, 2024, I wrote this with respect to the word that I knew the Lord was building in me, show them where we are. I said, where are we? We're at the place of death, and most people still do not see it. Instead, we, at least most of us, still think that we can solve our many problems politically. So here in the States, we fight for one political party or the other, Democrat versus Republican. We do not realize that both parties remain firmly rooted in the idolatrous soil of the mystery religion the Bible calls Babylon the Great. This mystery religion controls every religious system of man. Catholicism, all the harlot daughters of Catholicism, that is the thousands of so-called Protestant churches, the Muslim religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Libertarianism, Luciferianism, Satanism, Judaism, Nazism, Zionism, Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Jesuits, the countless New Age and Gnostic believers in every other philosophy that exists, like Nihilism, a book I would recommend you read is G.K. Chesterton's book, The Man Who Was Thursday, for an example of nihilistic thought. Babylon the Great also includes the many so-called Christian patriots in groups like NAR. NAR stands for New Apostolic Reformation, whose corrupted theology has led them to blindly follow Donald Trump. They blindly follow him because they believe his lying words instead of looking for his non-existent fruit 
and then judging whether he has righteous fruit or not. He always chooses corrupt individuals to fill all of his governmental positions of power. He never accomplishes any of his proclaimed goals like draining the swamp or locking her up. He supports Israel's genocide of Palestinians. He implemented Operation Warp Speed, which killed and maimed many, many around the world. And he implemented the insane policies of his COVID advisors like Anthony Fauci. Also at the very end of his first term in office, he signed the Abraham Accords. This was in 2020, October 2020. And that included a coin that shows Satan in the form of the planet Saturn as our ultimate goal of worship. It also shows the whole COVID-19 agenda on that coin. You should look at that up. The Abraham Accord coin. When Donald Trump proclaims he has not repented, Oh, I'm sorry, I missed a part. Understand this. Donald Trump has no righteous fruit. He has publicly stated many times that he has nothing to repent of. Therefore, he does not repent of anything. But the prophet John says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Now let me read that whole passage. It's in 1 John 1 verses 1 through 5 or uh, yeah 1 chapter chapter 1 verses 5 through 10 this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness we lie and do not practice the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Well, that's what Trump says. So the truth is not in him. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not not sinned, like Donald Trump does, he says he has not sinned, then we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. When Donald Trump proclaims he has not repented and does not need to repent, he makes a public declaration that he has no sin. What declaration do we make? I've tried to walk in obedience to the Lord for these 47 years since the Lord revealed himself to me. And I can tell you that I still repent of sin. I sometimes repent of sins that I committed when I was a child. I remember some time ago repenting of something I did when I was nine years old. It was about a year or two ago that came to my mind where uh, somebody wanted to, uh, I think, play with me, but I was mad at him or something. And uh, He was pretty far away, but I got my BB gun out and shot a BB at him. Fortunately, I didn't hit him, but, you know, I repented of that. And things like that, every little thing. Remember, Jesus says that we will give account for every word that we say, every deed that we do. But Donald Trump says he does not repent of anything. He does not need to, especially now since some say that he's an apostle, a messenger of God. If you notice how many apostles are suddenly on the scene, Let me just tell you, they're false apostles. But what does the Bible say about him? 1 John 1.8 says the truth is not in him. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This means that Jesus does not reside in Donald Trump's heart. It also means that you who support, follow, and plan to vote for him are deceived and that you are blindly following an antichrist spirit because it's the antichrist spirit that sets himself up in our hearts proclaiming himself to be God. That's who is God in Donald Trump's heart. 
Of course, the other candidate for president this year is also filled with and follows the same Antichrist spirit. For those with eyes to see, the abomination of desolation has been revealed. You should read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And I have done a lot of videos on this, and I encourage you to watch those, because the time is now. Show them where we are. We are there. This is the beginning of the day of the Lord, when judgment comes upon the earth, and it begins with the house of God. The great tribulation is about to begin. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus told us to flee to the mountains of Judea when we see the abomination of desolation that 2 Thessalonians talks about and Daniel talked about. Understand this, the mountains Jesus talks about are spiritual mountains. They're not the literal mountains over in Judea. These spiritual mountains speak of the first fruits, sons of God, the 144,000 that we see in Revelation chapter 14. These holy ones, these Kodeshim, these overcomers of God are glorified before the rest of overcoming Christians. And they're, they're glorified for a reason before the rest because the rest are not ready. According to Matthew 25, they are the five virgins who were ready when Jesus came as a thief in the night. Are you ready? Five of the virgins were not ready. They were virgins. They were Christians, but they're not ready. Those are the ones who in Revelation chapter 12 have to flee to the wilderness in order to be taught and also provided for by these 144,000 overcomers. These who have to flee to the wilderness will have to go through the three and a half years of tribulation in order to buy the extra oil that they need to partake of the first resurrection that occurs at the end of the three and a half year tribulation. Now I'm going to show you where we are from the Word of God. We're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 50. This explains where, where we are today. Now, Jeremiah 50 and 51 do not deal with the destruction of ancient Babylon, even though most people believe that they do. They are prophetic scriptures that deal with the destruction of Babylon the Great at the end of time. Revelation 17 says that God puts it in the heart of the beast that is the ruling political power, the head of the ruling political power. Those who make the decisions about what's going on. Have you wondered why we don't have good food to eat anymore? Have you wondered why the skies are constantly filled with chemtrails? Have you wondered why they use directed energy weapons against us? It's because the powers that be are destroying, deliberately destroying the infrastructure of our world system and that is Babylon the Great. It's deliberately being done. And this, these two chapters in Jeremiah 50 and 51 describe the destruction of Babylon the Great. Throughout these two chapters, and also in Revelation 18, which shows you the destruction of Babylon the Great, repeatedly Jesus warns those who are still in Babylon, who still partake of all of the pleasures of Babylon. How many people are still going on vacation? In this world that is on the brink of nuclear war, how can you, how can you think of going on a vacation? What is in your mind? How can you imagine that things are as they are? 
I didn't watch it, but I saw a few pictures on the beginning of videos, and I didn't watch the videos, of the satanic goings-on at the recent Paris Olympics. And it's, it's the same in the uh, uh, Super Bowl. There's always satanic Im imagery everywhere with respect to the great things that the world does, Babylon the Great does. Now, bear what I'm reading in mind from Jeremiah 50 with respect to what I said concerning Maurice Samuel's book called You Gentiles. The Gentiles prophetically are Israel. Israel, you have to read the book of Hosea and then read Romans chapter 10. The gospel was taken to the Gentiles, which included many, many of many of the ancient Israelites who were dispersed throughout the nations by the king of Assyria in around 720 BC. It's hidden, it's a hidden mystery, but the church is prophetically Israel of the Old Testament. So when I read the word Israel, think the church. When I read the word Judah, think the Jews. And the Jews have, have retained a distinctive national identity, whereas the Israelites did not. The Israelites, many of them became Christians. And the Christians became as defiled as the ancient Israelites and as defiled as the ancient Jews of Judea and as defiled as the current Jews still are. Jeremiah 50 verse 1. <clears throat> the word that I am spoke concerning Babylon concerning the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare among the nations and proclaim, set up a banner and proclaim. Conceal it not and say Babylon is taken. Bel is put to shame. Merodach is dismayed. Her images are put to shame. Her idols are dismayed. The Christian church is filled with idolatry. Just look at the Catholic church. Just go into a Catholic church. For out of the north a nation has come up against her, which shall make her land a desolation, and none shall dwell in it. Both man and beast shall flee away. Out of the north, what nation controls the north? Russia. And who has been poked over and over and over again? Who is always the boogeyman, the bogeyman? Who is always the bad guy? What did we hear for the first four years of uh, well, for Trump's first uh, term in office. It was always Russia, Russia, Russia. But even today, even since then, it's been Russia, Russia, Russia. Until finally, just a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, the Ukrainians, upon orders and upon receiving all of the weapons of war from NATO, and the United States, because the United States is the primary member of NATO, lawlessly attacked Russia without declaring war upon Russia. I believe this nation is Russia. Russia will bring judgment to the lawless West, to the lawless Gentiles. In those days and in that time, what days are Jeremiah talking about? These days. The days that we live in now. In those days and in that time, declares the Lord, the people of Israel, the church, and the people of Judah, the Jews, shall come together weeping as they come, and they shall seek I am their God. They shall ask the way to Zion with faces turned toward him saying, Come, let us join ourselves to I Am and an everlasting covenant that will never be forgotten. 
Now, it mentioned Zion, and so many people now are caught up with the Zionist cause. They think it's a righteous cause, but it's not. It is an utterly evil cause. The Zionists ruling right now in Israel are lawless Jews. And they do not represent all of the Jews. There are many, many Jews who want no part of this. To be against this Zionist regime is not to be anti-Jew or anti-Semite. It's to be anti-genocide. It's to be against the lawless wickedness that they are perpetrating against the Palestinians. You know, they destroy Christian churches and Christians as well as those who are Muslims. You need to understand that. I'm going to read verses 4 and 5 again. In those days, which are these days now, and Samuel Morris, I mean, uh, Maurice Samuel, wrote prophetically a hundred years ago. He revealed who, exactly what the Gentiles were, and that their religion really is just a mockery of Christ and the things Christ taught. In those days and in that time, declares I am, the people of Israel and the people of Judah shall come together weeping as they come, and they shall seek I am their God. They shall ask the way to Zion with faces turned toward it, saying, Come, let us join ourselves to I am in an everlasting covenant that will never be forgotten. That is the new covenant. Most of the earth, most Christians, still are not in the new covenant because they do not walk in faith. They walk in unbelief, and they still walk in the idols of their heart. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray. Yes, our shepherds, our church leaders, from almost the beginning of the church age, 2,000 years ago, have led the people astray, turning them away on the mountains, turning them away on the governments. From mountain to hill they have gone. You read uh, Maurice's book and... Jews, of course, have had to go from nation to nation. From mountain to hill they have gone. They have forgotten their fold. All who found them have devoured them, and their enemies have said, We are not guilty, for they have sinned against the Lord. They have sinned against I am, their habitation of righteousness. I am the hope of their fathers. And that's true. Christian and Jew alike have sinned against I am, and therefore we have been judged. We all have been judged these last 2,000 years. Flee from the midst of Babylon. Go out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as male goats before the flock. For behold, I am stirring up and bringing against Babylon a gathering of great nations. It will not just be Russia. There are many nations who are, who are so angry at the United States and her allies. For behold, I am stirring up and bringing against Babylon a gathering of great nations from the north country, and they shall array themselves against her. From there she shall be taken. Their arrows are like a skilled warrior who does not return empty-handed. Chaldea shall be plundered. All who plunder her shall be sated, declares I am. Though you rejoice, though you exalt, O plunderers of my heritage, though you frolic like a heifer in the pasture, and neigh like stallions, your mother shall be utterly ashamed, and she who bore you shall be disgraced. Behold, she shall be the last of the nations, a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Is that speaking of America, the last of the nations, the melting pot that was supposed to be a Christian nation, the hope of the nations? The last of the nations became the most satanic, the most evil of all nations, who deceives every nation, who destroys every nation, who doesn't bow down and do exactly what she says. Behold, she shall be the last of the nations, a wilderness, a dry land, a desert. Because of the wrath of I am, she shall not be inhabited, but shall be an utter desolation. Everyone who passes by Babylon shall be appalled and hiss because of all her wounds.
set yourselves in array against Babylon all around. All you who bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against I am. Oh, we have sinned against I am. My God, have mercy, O oh Lord. But bring this about because it is time to judge because the earth is defiled. Raise a shout against her all around. She has surrendered. Her bulwarks have fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For this is the vengeance of I am. Take vengeance on her. Do to her as she has done to others. Cut off from Babylon the sower and the one who handles the sickle in times of harvest. Because of the sword of the oppressor, everyone shall turn to his own people and everyone shall flee to his own land. Israel is is a hunted sheep driven away by lions. First the king of Assyria devoured him, and now at last Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has gnawed his bones. That's the king who destroyed Judea in around 600 BC. 120 years before that, the king of Assyria devoured the ancient nation of Israel. And Israel prophetically is the church. Judea, still represented by the Jews today. Therefore, thus says I am of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I am bringing judgment on the king of Babylon and his land as I punish the king of Assyria. I will restore Israel to his pasture and he shall feed on Carmel and in Bashan and his desire shall be satisfied on the hills of Ephraim and in Gilead. In those days and in that time, declares I am, iniquity, sin, shall be sought in Israel, and there shall be none. And sin shall be sought in Judah, and none shall be found. For I will pardon those whom I leave as a remnant. Okay, many people believe this was fulfilled when the Jews returned to Israel in 1947 and 48. But no, it was part of God's plan for sure. We are now at the time when this is going to be finally fulfilled, when those who have done the most gross evils in the world, every debauchery known to man, every debauchery known to man, committed by the current nation of Israel, the United States, the Western nations, every sort of vileness, every sort of lawlessness is still being committed by these nations. And that is coming to an end. And that is why the Great Tribulation is about to begin. Show them where we are, God told me. Do you understand where we are? How can it be that so many are still running here and there, going on vacation, thinking everything is all right. It's just normal. It's not normal. It is evil beyond compare. Flee from the midst of Babylon, lest you share in her sins and her plagues. We have a very, very short time left. There's a little bit of time to get oil for your lamp before the Lord, the King of Kings, comes as a thief in the night? Are you ready? Do you understand where we are?